Hello students, welcome back to our channel. This is Gallery Ashnabino. And a very good morning to all of you. Okay, so we were discussing our properties of fluids and today we are entering into the second lecture of properties of fluids. Okay, and today we are continuing the topic. In the last class, we have started our pressure. Okay, and we, we analyzed that as the depth increases, the pressure increases by a factor HROG and for a fluid at rest at a particular horizontal level. For a fluid at rest at a particular horizontal level, each and every point will have the same, same pressure. Okay, each and every point will have the same pressure that we have discussed in the last class. Also, we have discussed the Pascal's law, the two statements, the pressure applied to any point on a fluid is equally and uniformly transmitted throughout the fluid, okay, on which we have worked out a hydraulic lift and application of Pascal's law. And the second statement that we have discussed already, for a fluid at rest, each and every point will have that. For a fluid at rest, at a particular horizontal level, each and every point will have the same pressure. Okay, this much topic we have already completed. And today we are going to continue this topic of pressure. Okay, and according to the Pascal statement, for a fluid at rust, for a fluid at rust, at a particular horizontal level, at a particular horizontal level, horizontal level each and every point each and every point will have the same pressure have the same pressure one of the statement of Pascal's law which we proved also in the last class okay and this statement from this statement a lot of numericals tricky questions will be asked for us in our competitive exams and also in our board exam NCRT itself have provided the questions based on this statement so what is the statement for a fluid at rest at a particular horizontal level each and every point will have the same pressure okay on the basis of that a lot of questions are tricky good easy very cute questions have been asked okay so today we are starting the chapter with or starting the lecture with this question by practicing this question okay and the first question it is from ncrt okay in our ncrt it is given that there is a youtube there is a youtube which youtube which you are watching now no 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 not that youtube this YouTube, okay, wow, this YouTube, you shaped the glass too, okay, at first they had said that this YouTube, here is my blue ink, is filled with, contains some, not filled with, it contains some mercury, it contains some mercury, so this is mercury, okay, okay, and now the two limbs have atmospheric pressure so since the two limbs will have the same pressure the level of mercury is c okay and in the question they are saying that now in one limb 10 centimeter of in one limb 10 centimeter of water 10 centimeter of water h2o is filled and in the other limb in the second limb 12.5 centimeter of 12.5 centimeter of 12.5 centimeter of methylated spirit methylated spirit what is the purpose of methylated spirit methyl alcohol plus ethyl alcohol why methanol is added your chemistry question because for industrial purpose 
Always methylated spirit is used because methyl alcohol is poisonous, which makes the drinking alcohol ethyl alcohol poisonous. Okay, so 12.5 or question 12.5 centimeter of methylated spirit is added in the second limb and in the first limb, 10 centimeter of water is added. And during this process also, during this process also, the level of mercury say in both the limbs. That is 10 centimeter of water in one limb and 12.5 centimeter of methylated spirit in the other limb makes the level of mercury same, same level in the two limbs. Okay, then the question is find the find the specific gravity find the specific gravity of methylated spirit this is the question okay you have to find the specific gravity of methylated spirit this is the question okay and we have to do this based on our how to find the specific gravity so at first we have to know what is specific gravity specific gravity is equivalent to relative density that is density of spirit to density of water what is specific gravity it is equivalent to relative density that is the density of spirit to density of water so how to take the specific gravity here it is said that now too, when 10 centimeter of water is taken in one limb and 12.5 centimeter of methylated spirit is taken in other limb, now too, what happens? The pressure remains same. So we can say the pressure P1 here, the pressure P1 here is equivalent to pressure P2. Okay, now we will use this equation. P1 is equal to P2. Who provides P1? 10 centimeter of water plus atmospheric pressure. So we can say P0 plus H rho G of water is equal to here 12.5 centimeter of water plus P0. In the last class we have said that as the depth increases the pressure increases by a factor H rho G. So now it becomes P0 plus H rho G of spirit, methylated spirit. Canceling P0 height of water density of water into g is equal to height of spirit density of spirit into g cancelling g we want the density of spirit to density of water therefore specific gravity is equal to okay specific gravity is equal to density of spirit to density of water density of spirit to density of water which is equal to height of water to height of spirit equal to 10 centimeter by 12.5 centimeter okay 100 by 125 what is the answer cancelling with the 5 5 to the 10 0 5 to the 10 25 4 by 5 the specific gravity of spirit becomes 0.8 so what is the answer the specific gravity of spirit becomes 0.8 and how we calculated this purely by using the statement of Pascal's law which we yesterday we have. Yesterday means in the last class we have proved for a fluid at rest at a particular horizontal level each and every point will have the same pressure. Very important, very important, very important. Clear it? Okay. Okay. So for a particular fluid at a particular horizontal level each and every point will have for a horizontal level of fluid at trust, each and every point will have the same pressure. Very important topic. A lot of questions. And this is a question from our NCRT. And in NCRT, understood? Clear? Have to take this. And in NCRT, the next question is about this one itself. That is, the next question they have given that in the above question. What? In the above question. Suppose the limbs have sufficient length. The limbs of the U2 has sufficient length. And 15 centimeter of water and 15 centimeter of methylated spirit is further poured into the respective arms. What? In the next question, they had given that the limbs of the U2 are sufficiently large. 
the limbs of the YouTube are sufficiently large. And they have poured 15 centimeter of water in this limb and again 15 centimeter of methylated spirit in the other limb. Okay. Now they are saying that there is a difference in the mercury level in two limbs. In the two limbs, there is a difference in the mercury level. Okay, clear. And if so, what is the difference in the mercury level when 15 centimeter of water and 15 centimeter of methylated spirit are further added to this YouTube? If that YouTube has the sufficiently large limbs. Okay. So they are now clear this. Okay. So now they are saying that how much water is present in the first limb already? So what is the question? They had added 15 centimeter of water in the first limb and 15 centimeter. This tube has small limbs, but you have to consider that you tube with a sufficiently large limb so that this much of water and methylated spirit will retain here. Okay, without overflowing. Clear? 15 centimeter of methylated spirit is again added to the two limbs. You have to consider the height of the limb. Okay, not overflowing. Then they are saying that now there is a difference in the mercury level in the two limbs. What is the difference in the mercury level? This is the question. At first, you have to find whether there is a difference. Okay, if they are in level, if the mercury in both limbs in level, then the pressure will be same. So at first you have to find the pressure provided by water in the second case. Second question. Okay. The pressure provided by water is P0 plus. Now what is the total height? 10 plus 15, 25. 25 rho g. Okay. 25 h rho g of water. Of water. We have to write P h 2 is now equal to P0 plus H of water, 25 centimeter into density 1. What is density of water in gram per cc? 1 gram per cc. So you have to know density of water is equal to 1 gram per cc or equal to 1000 kilogram per meter cube. Similarly, another by Harting value is density of mercury. You must know that also. 13.6 gram per cc or 13.6 into into thousand kilogram per meter you, you must know the values okay so 25 now this is centimeter so i am taking one gram per cc into g so we can say p0 p h2o is equal to p0 plus 25 g and what is the pressure this is the pressure provided by water now, what is the pressure provided by that of methylated spirit? Spirit. It is also P0 plus H rho G of spirit. Okay. P0 plus height 12.5 plus 15. What? 27.5. Correct. Into, we have find the specific gravity of spirit as 0.8 into G. So, what is the value of 27.5 into 0.8? May I take my calculator, dear students? Oh, yes. Miss, you always take calculators. And you ask us to do the problem. Yes, yes. Okay. P0 plus 22. This is equal to 22G. Okay. So, what is P of water? P of water. Sorry, this is spirit. So, what is P of water? P of water is P0 plus 25G. And what is P of spirit? P0 plus 22G. So surely the pressure is different. Here water provides P0 plus 225G of pressure. And here the methylated spirit is providing only P0 plus 22G. That is, there is a difference in the pressure. Okay. Now what is the pressure difference in the two limbs? The pressure difference is now equal to which is the larger one, PH2O minus P spirit, pressure provided by the spirit. Delta P is equal to P0 plus 25G minus P0 plus 22G. We can now write it as P0 plus 25G 
minus P0 minus 22G. P0, P0 cancelling. Delta P is equal to 25 minus 22, 3G. And this becomes H rho G of mercury is equal to 3G. G, G cancelling. And the remaining we will write here with another color. So rho of mercury Hg into height of mercury is equal to 3. And height of mercury now equal to 3 by density of mercury. What is density of mercury? 13.6. That will be given. Otherwise you have to buy hard. 13.6. Oh yeah. I will take my calculator once more. 3 divided by 13.6 equal to point zero zero. Sorry, point two two zero five. The value is point two two centimeter. Okay. So what is the height? What is the height level difference in the height now? It is equal to point two two centimeter. Clear? Do you understand what we are doing? Yeah. You have to assume the statement. What for a fluid at rest? At a particular horizontal level, each and every point will have the same pressure. Here, it is different pressure. The pressure provided by 1 is different from the pressure provided by 2. Therefore, we have to find what is the level difference in mercury. Okay, clear. Not this much. Okay, hoping you understood this. And similar question is asked in our NEAT exam also. Okay. So, in a previous year question, it is given that there is again a YouTube. Once more, they are providing a YouTube. Okay. So, may I run this statement also? Now you know the statement. One more question based on the same concept. Clear. Third question. Again, there is a YouTube. There is a YouTube like this. In the next question, there is a YouTube like this. And three immiscible liquids, it is given that three immiscible liquids are filled here in such a way that the first liquid, this is the first liquid. The first liquid is filled like this. The second liquid is filled like this. Okay. And the third liquid is filled like this. Okay. It is filled like this. And the density of the first is given as, this is the density of this liquid. We can say rho 2. This is rho 1, rho 2, rho 3. 2 gram per cc. The density of the first liquid is 1 gram per cc. And this height is 10 centimeter. They have taken 10 centimeter. Okay. And what about the third one? This is also 10 centimeter. They have taken the third liquid also 10 centimeter with the density rho 3 is equal to 3 gram per cc. Okay, clear. So, if three liquids are taken like this, what happens? Densest liquid, denser liquid, least density. So, what happens? We know the extra pressure delta P is H rho G. Gauge pressure is H rho G. If density is maximum, what happens? It, it provides more pressure. If density is maximum, pressure will be maximum. So, the pressure exerted by rho 3 will be greater than that of the rho 1. At this point, the pressure provided by rho 1 at this point and the pressure provided by rho 2 at this point will be entirely different. This provides a larger pressure because the rho value is greater than that of the rho value of the first. So here the pressure is greater, here the pressure is lesser. So what happens after some time we can see, it is given, we can see the third liquid displaces downward and the first liquid displaces upward. By a distance x, it is given, 
it is given after some time what happens now the u2 contains the liquid like this okay now the u2 contains the liquid like this what happens this was the level of this was the level of excuse me okay yes this was the level of initial level of our third liquid but now the third liquid is present like this okay the third liquid moves like this up to this much okay so what happens to the row 2 it moves it moves like this it moves like this and what happens to the first one with the density 1 gram per cc it moves up like this now this is the position clear okay the figure is given and the question is what is the x through which the de the densest liquid moves down when the system attains the equilibrium when the system attains the equilibrium what is the distance moved down by the densest liquid find x this is the question find x okay options are given 1 cm 2 cm 3 cm a b c 3 cm and d 4 cm clear this is the question what is the distance moved by the densest liquid downward when the system attains the equilibrium this is the question how to do how to do the same sentence at a particular point of the horizontal level each and every point will have the same for a static fluid at a particular horizontal level each and every point will have the same pressure take 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 i am taking this point okay i am taking this and this point suppose here the pressure is p1 and here the pressure is p2 okay so what about p1 and p2 tell me same level pressure same p1 is equal to p2 what is the pressure provided by this region pressure at this region x moves down x moves here so this is also x okay and this is 10 centimeter of the first liquid so we can write and here it is p0 so p0 plus 10 uh, rho 10 rho g whether i have to write h rho g we are taking h rho g provided by the first liquid we will write h rho g by the first liquid plus this is the first liquid this is the second liquid and this is the third liquid okay h rho g provided by the second is equal to here also it is p0 so p0 plus h rho g provided by the third okay now p0 p0 is cancelled what about h 10 into 1 into g plus what about this x into 2 into g is equal to what about this if total was 10 and now it is 10 minus x clear clear students dear students x is moved to this position so x moves down the remaining is 10 minus x into 3 into g g g g 10 plus 2x is equal to 30 minus 3x okay solving 5x is equal to 20 x is equal to 4 centimeters so which is the correct option this is a previous year question okay so clear so how to take the pressure difference or pressure level everything we understood for a fluid at a particular for a fluid at trust at a particular horizontal level each and every point will have the same pressure okay if there is a pressure difference there is a difference in the height also clear now the system is in here it was in, not in equilibrium now the system is in equilibrium the pressure at two different points are same clear okay so write the question do it so hoping all of you understood the thing 
So it is a common type of question asked you for our competitive exam also, both for board and competitive exam. Clear? So we understood atmosphere always exert a pressure to the surface and fluid exert, let's say fluid pressure HROG. So the total pressure will be P0 plus HROG. Okay. So we were discussing about both the atmospheric pressure and also the fluid pressure. So there is an atmospheric pressure. Okay. Can you say which is the device which is used to measure the atmospheric pressure? Can you say which is the device used to measure the atmospheric pressure? Yes. Yes, you have said. What is that? Very good. Barometer. What is that? I am sure you have said that it is barometer. Okay. So, atmospheric pressure is measured by the pressure exerted by atmosphere P0. We know its value 1.01325 into 10 raised to 5 Pascal. Okay. That pressure is exerted by atmosphere and the atmospheric pressure is measured by a device called as the barometer. And dear students, do you know who first designed this barometer? Yes. Whether you have said? Yes. Torricelli. Who was that? Torricelli was the person who designed the barometer for the first time. And in Torricelli's barometer, he used mercury. He used mercury to measure the atmospheric pressure. He had used mercury whose density is 13.6 gram per cc or which is also taken as 13.6 into 10 raised to 3 kilogram per meter cube. Okay. So the barometer was first designed by Torricelli and in Torricelli's barometer he had used mercury to measure the atmospheric pressure. And the density of mercury is 13.6 gram per cc or 13.6 into 10 raised to 3 kilogram per meter cube. Clear? Okay. And what is the construction? Oh my god, there is not so much things here. A very little construction that is he had taken, Torricelli had taken a beaker, okay, which is filled with mercury. This beaker was filled with mercury. Clear? And he had taken a tube also, glass tube, a small tube, which was completely filled with, which was completely filled with the same thing. Here it is also mercury and here also it is mercury, okay. So he had taken a beaker, glass beaker and a glass tube. Both of them were filled with mercury. Okay, then what he had done, he had closed the mouth of the tube. Mm. What he had done, he had closed the mouth of the tube. Okay, the mouth of the tube was closed. It is filled up to brain. And then also he closed the mouth of the tube and then he invertedly placed the tube inside this beaker containing mercury. What he had done, he had Close the mouth of the tube by his finger, by something, and then he invertedly placed the tube inside this mercury containing beaker. After some time, he has seen the mercury here rises to a particular height, H. The mercury here rises to a particular height, H. Okay, then what about this point and this point here, pressure P1? Here the pressure is, here the pressure is P2. We know P1 is equal to P2. Clear? Who provides the pressure at here? Atmosphere. That is taken as P0. So P0 is equal to, what about, it was completely filled with mercury. And when it is invertedly placed here, this becomes vacuum. What is this? Vacuum. So whether vacuum exerts some pressure? No. Now the pressure is purely exerted by H rho G. Now the pressure is purely exerted by H rho G. Clear? Pressure is purely exerted by here. This is vacuum. Can you see? This is vacuum because it was filled with the region was filled with the mercury. When mercury moves down, this is vacuum and the vacuum doesn't exert any pressure. So this pressure, this much pressure is purely provided by the height of the mercury column which is equal to H rho G. H of mercury Rho of mercury and G. Clear? 
and this height was measured to be 76 centimeter this height was measured to be 76 centimeter so taking 76 centimeter into density of mercury 13.6 gram per cc into acceleration due to gravity in cgs they had taken the value of g in cgs and taking the whole value and converting it into si the value of pressure becomes thus we got the value of atmospheric pressure as they had multiplied this the value of g in cg system or you have to convert this into centimeter centimeter into meter 0.76 then gram per cc converted to kilogram per meter cube into 10 raised to 3 into g they had taken this like this 76 into 10 raised to minus 2 meter into 13.6 into 10 raised to 3 kilogram per meter cube into g 10 meter per second square now it becomes 1.01325 into 10 raised to 5 pascal si thus he had taken the atmospheric pressure this is how he had taken the atmospheric pressure clear take this okay so what is the atmospheric pressure we have taken Recently, had taken the atmospheric pressure to be 1.01325 into 10 raised to 5 Pascal. Okay, so this is the method by which we had calculated the atmospheric pressure. Very simple. And this device is called as this machine is called as barometer. Clear? Okay. And after this tourism is barometer, a lot of scientists had taken other barometers where they had used other fluids instead of this mercury okay a lot of scientists had taken barometers where other fluids were taken and they had calculated the atmospheric pressure but now to in order to find the atmospheric pressure the best method is to take our tourism is barometer Okay, now to be prefer the tourism is barometer for the for the measurement of atmospheric pressure. My pen falls down. Okay, good. So why others barometer is not preferred now also? Tourism is barometer, the first barometer designed by Torricelli. It is now too preferred for the measurement of atmospheric pressure. Can you say why? because of the fluid taken by him it was mercury the mercury what is the speciality of Tercelli's barometer he had taken mercury to measure the atmospheric pressure okay when we had taken or when he had taken mercury for barometer, what was the height of the mercury in this inverter to 76 centimeter? Okay, 76 centimeter of mercury exerts a pressure. That pressure is equal to 76 centimeters of mercury exerts a pressure and that pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure. Okay, okay. And other scientists had taken other fluids but it is not preferred now to be preferred only to is barometer this is because of the speciality of mercury okay that is mercury is commonly used as the barometric fluid from the time of Torricelli. other fluids are uh, rejected why because of the speciality of mercury because the first one is it is the densest liquid we know what is the density of mercury 13.6 okay and if we take water instead of density uh water instead of mercury uh, uh, sorry water instead of mercury what is the density of water one gram per cc density of mercury is somewhat 13.6 times greater than that of water so what happens we have taken the pressure as h rho g h rho g Okay, if density is greater, if density is greater, the height of the tube required will be very small. 
so that we can suitably or conveniently take it take a tube and find the pressure okay if we take water instead of mercury what happens the density is 13.6 gram lesser that is 13.6 gram times lesser for water so what about the height the height of the tube required for the water to rise up is 13.6 grams times 13.6 times not a gram i'm sorry 13.6 times larger than that of this tube that is height may raise up to 10 meter or uh, 11 meter 12 meter 30 meter and you have to take a tube that much length okay so whether it is practically usable the first thing mercury why mercury is commonly used as the barometric material lake fluid because it is the densest liquid okay if the density is very large the height of the tube required for the barometer will be very less that is the first thing and the second thing is that the second thing is that it is opaque and have shining appearance opaque and shining appearance and the third one it doesn't volatilize uh, that is vaporize it doesn't volatile not okay it doesn't vaporize us easily all of these are the reason behind why mercury is commonly used for barometer why tourism is barometer is now you now too now till now it is preferred okay so what is the reason in tourism is barometer mercury is used why mercury what are the specialties of this mercury it is the densest liquid when the density is larger the height required is lesser than opaque and shining appearance. We can see it clearly shining, silver colored. And what about its vaporization? If it vaporizes, what happens? If it vaporizes, here height decreases. If the height decreases, HROG becomes a wrong answer. Okay, so these are the reasons by which uh, mercury is preferred for barometer. Sometimes the question will be like this why water is not preferred? Why water is not preferred for barometer? You have to reverse the answer because its density is very less. It is transparent and it has no any shining appearance. We cannot identify the presence of water and it vaporizes easily. All of these are the reason why water is not used in our barometer. Clear? Okay. Very good. Clear? So may I rub this? Yes. Sure. So, atmospheric pressure is measured by barometer. And if so, can you tell me what, which is the device which is commonly used to measure a gas pressure, not air, atmosphere, but any other particular gas pressure? Which device is used to measure gas pressure? Gas pressure. Gas pressure is, yes, tell me. Yes, ma'am, we have already said it. Manometer, which is the device which is used to measure the gas pressure, it is manometer. Okay. Okay, which also works almost in the same way, in the same statement for a horizontal level, pressure is same and so on. Okay, that is very small arrangement. We will take it as, suppose here, the gas whose pressure has to be measured is filled in a container a spherical container for example okay and also there is a youtube here also there is a youtube but now we are preferring a youtube with a, a shorter arm and a longer arm okay and it contains some mercury here also you always take mercury because its density is larger okay since both of the arms will provide atmospheric pressure the mercury in the tube will be in same level, P0, P0 on both arms. And now, the U-tube is now connected to this container containing the gas, okay, by some valve or so on, like this. Okay, we have taken like this. And here there was mercury. And here there was mercury like this. Okay. And this is our gas. So now what happens to this gas? 
the gas rushes and comes to here. Okay, now here the pressure is provided by gas. And here the pressure is provided by atmosphere. What happens? The gas pressure is greater than atmospheric pressure. So mercury moves down. Okay. The mercury moves down. And here the mercury moves up. Okay. Like this. Now this is the H height difference in both of the lips. Clear? Okay. So what happens? Now the system is in equilibrium. This point and this point are in equilibrium. Okay. Equilibrium. We can write P1 equal to P2. Right. That is. So now to P1 equal to P2. P1 is the pressure provided by the gas and P2 is P0 plus H rho G. Take this, take this height H by using a scale. Density of mercury is known to us and G. You will get the gas pressure. Very simple. Clear, simple twice. Here, the pressure is provided by the gas to this point. Here, the pressure is provided by P0 plus HOG of mercury. So, P gas will be equal to P0 plus HOG. Clear? Okay. So, hoping you have understood this much of topic. Very good. So, manometer works like this. Now we know how a barometer and a manometer works. Clear? Yes. Now, so hoping up to this topic you will understood very well. Now, we are considering the pressure of a fluid. Of a fluid. Hello, students. May we go to the next topic? Pressure of a fluid in an accelerated frame. Now we are going to consider the pressure of a fluid. Till now we have taken the pressure of fluid in a static condition. Okay, that is the container in which the liquid was taken is at rest. But now the container in which the fluid is taken is not at rest, it is accelerating. So what happens to the pressure if it is taken in an accelerating system? This is the new topic. Pressure of a fluid in an accelerated frame. So let us start. So what is the speciality of this accelerated frame? Accelerated frame is called as the non-inertial frame. Accelerated frame is commonly called as the non-inertial frame. Okay. And in any non-inertial frame, there comes a pseudo force, which you have studied in your loss of motion. For any accelerated frame, there is a pseudo force. And this pseudo force always acts opposite to the opposite to the acceleration of frame. That means the pseudo force which comes into action in a non-inertial frame will always act opposite to the acceleration of the frame. If the frame is accelerating right, the pseudo force will be towards left. If the acceleration is towards uh, left, then pseudo force will be towards right. If the acceleration is towards upward, pseudo force will be towards downward. If the acceleration is towards downward, pseudo force will be towards upward. Always pseudo force acts opposite to the accelerated frame. Clear? This we have studied in our loss of motion. We have studied in our loss of motion. Clear? So this much topic we must understood about an accelerated frame. So what is an accelerated frame? It is a non-inertial frame where a pseudo force always act and the pseudo force always act opposite to the acceleration of the frame. Clear? Okay. Now, suppose we have taken a vertically accelerated frame vertically accelerated frame 
Okay. In loss of motion, we have taken a vertically accelerated frame named as lift. Do you, do you remember? Yes, lift. Here also, suppose we have taken a lift. Okay. And a cylinder which is filled with a fluid of density rho is placed inside this lift. And the first condition, the lift is accelerating upwards. The lift is accelerating upwards. Okay, that is the acceleration of lift is upward and it contains a fluid. It contains a fluid like this. Okay, so take the free body diagram. One more thing, whether we are talking about the static dynamics that is static or dynamic condition whether it is dynamic listen with respect to the observer inside the lift this this material is at rest we are not talking about a flowing liquid we are not at all talking about a flowing liquid the fluid is at rest now too what happens if the cylinder or the uh, or the material or the vessel containing the fluid is accelerating up the vessel is accelerating, not the fluid. The, the fluid dynamics means the fluid has to flow from one point to other point and the vessel will be stationary like this. Suppose you have taken a pipe, the pipe is at rest, but the water inside the pipe is flowing. This is the dynamics of fluid. This is the motion of fluid. Whether this happens here, here the container which contains the fluid is moving up or down. Okay, the fluid is at rest. Okay, with respect to the vessel, with respect to the vessel, we have to write here. With respect to the vessel, to the vessel, the fluid is at rest. Fluid is at rest. Clear? With respect to the vessel, the fluid is at rest. So, taking this fluid separately, Suppose we have taken the fluid separately. Okay, this is the fluid. So can you say what are the forces acting on the fluid? In the last class itself, we have studied the pressure at this point provides a force, PEA, at the lower end. The pressure at this region, upper region, P0A. In the last class, we have studied, please, Take the first topic, then come to the second one. Okay, P zero A. And what about the weight? Weight is also acting downward. Weight is also acting downward. We know that. And since the frame is accelerated frame, a pseudo force acts, which always acts opposite to the acceleration of the frame. That means acceleration is upward. So pseudo force downward. M A. Clear? Mass of the fluid into acceleration downward. If the frame is accelerating upward, the pseudo force will be downward and may clear. And the fluid is at rest with respect to the vessel. So we can say the net force is equal to zero. The net upward force is equal to the net downward force. What is upward force? Only single one, PA. Is equal to downward forces, P0A, clear, plus Mg, plus Mb, okay, clear. And what is mass? Density is mass by volume. So mass is equal to density into volume. What is volume? Area is A, this much height of the fluid column is H. Then we write rho A, H into G. No, 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 no G. Rho AH. So now PA is equal to P0A plus density into volume into G plus density into volume into A. Or cancelling A, we will write P is equal to P0 plus this is H rho G that we have studied yesterday. And this is H rho A. That is, if the lift was at rest, if the lift was at rest, is that? Right? If the lift was at rest, the lower end has a pressure which is equal to P0 plus H rho G. But when the lift is accelerating upward, 
the lower end has a pressure which is equal to P0 plus HROG plus HROE. So what happens when the lift accelerates upward or the vessel which contains the fluid or the liquid accelerates upward, the pressure on the lower end increases by H rho A with respect to pressure on the lower end when the fluid containing vessel is at rest. If the vessel is at rest, what is the pressure on the lower end? P0 plus H rho G. And if the, if the fluid containing vessel is accelerating up, what happens? Here we have to write the pressure. Can you see? Oh, what is this? Where we write? Here we write that is pressure increases by H rho A at lower end. Okay. The pressure increases by H rho A at lower end. Clear? If the lift is accelerating or the fluid containing the vessel is accelerating, the fluid containing the in a uh, uh, vessel, yes, yes, the fluid containing vessel is accelerating up. What happens? The longer end pressure will be greater than the pressure at the longer end when it is at rest. Clear? Understood? Understood? Take this much of knots. Okay. Ready? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yes, ma'am. There is one more thing. Now we are going to the second one. The second thing. Okay. The same figure. Mm -hmm. You are so much. Yes. Accelerating downward. Now we are going to take the container in which the fluid is taken is accelerating downward. Now, the arrow is downward. That is, now too, it is non-inertial. There is a zero force which acts opposite to the acceleration of the frame. Okay, once more. Write PA upward, P0A downward, NG downward. And what about this MA? Now, you have to write this MA is upward. Because acceleration of the vessel containing fluid is downward. Clear? Okay, clear? Yes. With respect to the vessel, the fluid is at rest. Now too. That is F net is equal to zero. Now too. Force in upward direction is equal to force in downward direction. Now too. PA, upward, upward, PA plus EMA. Okay. PA plus EMA is equal to P0 plus NG. Clear? Now the upward force we have to run from here. Now the upward force are PA plus MA. PA, MA. Downward are P0A, NG. Okay. Now you will write PA is equal to P0A plus Ng minus Me. Pa is equal to P0A plus what is mass? Density into area into H into G minus density into area into H into A. Clear? Or we can now write Pa is cancelled. P is equal to P0 plus H rho G minus H rho that is, when the lift is accelerating down, the pressure on the lower end of the fluid decreases by a factor H rho A. When it was accelerating up, the pressure on the lower end increases by a factor H rho A. But when it is accelerating down, the pressure on the lower end decreases by a factor H rho A. So here we have to write, it oh, pressure decreases. The pressure decreases by H rho A at the lower end. At the lower end. Clear? Okay. So now we understood what happens when the vessel containing fluid is accelerated up or down. When the vessel containing fluid is accelerated up, the pressure on the lower end increases by a factor H rho A. And the vessel 
containing fluid is accelerated down, the pressure on the lower end it decreases the F factor HROA. Okay, when compared to the pressure on the lower end, right, when the fluid is at first. Clear? Clear? Hoping you understood everything. Okay. Clear? So today we have completed what happens to the pressure of the fluid in an accelerator system where the acceleration in which direction? Vertical direction. That means we have to study about the acceleration in horizontal direction also. We have to study about the acceleration in horizontal direction also. But that will be discussed in the next class because now itself the time is exceeding. My camera is going to switch off. Okay, everything has to be listened. We have to look after everything. So, hoping we have completed today's lecture. Okay, so till this topic, what topic? Pressure of a fluid in an accelerated frame, vertically accelerated frame, up and down, we have completed. That means in the next class, we will come with pressure of a fluid in an accelerated frame. If the acceleration occurs in which direction? Horizontal direction. Okay, okay. So till the next class, once more, this is our channel, Physics Gallery, Asha Bino. Seeing you in the next class and study well, stay well. Okay.